What's on, where and when? It's the Talk of Nelson. Talk Nelson Radio. Sport. The Marco Rugby Roundup. You're with the Marco Rugby Roundup and it's time for our special guest and it's a great pleasure to welcome to the show Mel Bosman and as Mel Natai, she was Blackfern 119 playing 17 tests as prop including the 2006 and 2010 Rugby World Cups. Uh, Mel, I know you well. Um, you're five foot five, so you must have been a bit of a mighty mouse when it came to propping a, a black fern scrum. Yeah, it was a little bit of a nugget, please. <laughs> um, but, you know, when you're small, when you're smaller than most in your position, you've got to be very technically sound. So that was something I, I've very much worked on right oh. through my career. Well, Mel Bosman has been the Marco FPC coach since 2020 and has just announced the 2022 FPC squad and off the back of some spirited MBS Tasman Trophy matches. Is it fair to say that your 2022 squad, Mel, is your fittest and best prepared yet? Oh, 100%. Absolutely right there. Um, it's been very encouraging seeing that. We had a trial last week to actually pick the team and it was outstanding. It was such a level up from the club rugby that's played here in Tasman um, and those girls were just fighting right to the death on the last minute. But that, um, that fitness level and that strength that's come through this year is, is a result of um, not so much from the coaching group whipping, cracking the whip in them, but it was more to do with the fact that we've had a bit of a cultural shift at the end of our last year's uh, season. So what we did as coaches is we really sort of brought the players in and asked them, asked of them what they wanted from um, you know, the rest of their time in this Marco jersey. And, you know, they, we were, we're all sick of losing. It's, it's not a nice place to be at the bottom of the table. And, you know, you've got to hold those players accountable um, for that space, right? You know, there's only so much you can do as a coach. But those players really responded to it. They held the space well, and over the summer they've worked their butts off and started the um, Tasman Trophy club season just out the gate. Honestly, they were outstanding right from the start. So what you're talking about actually is players self-driving themselves to improve rather than having the whip crack for them. So I guess that would have a lot to do with your leadership group. Um, You've got a new captain in Hannah Kelly. Uh, and a couple of vice captains in Tamara Silcock and Sui Paresa. So, I guess the question is, uh, you know, what qualities do they bring to this team that uh, the, is inspiring the younger ones? Well, you've, that word you've just used, Les, is, is the reason why they're in that role. Um, you know, Hannah Kelly and herself, she came back to Tasman after being away for a few years, and um, you know, has really grown as a leader. She's just put her put her hand up and led the way by example. She empowers those younger girls to step up with her. You know, she's very inspiring um, and encouraging. And when, when you're such a young side, like the average age of our team will be between sort of 20.5, actually, years old. So we've got a very young side. And when you've got someone as encouraging as Hannah Kelly, you know, you can you can only just go up from there, can't you? So yeah. Well, that's a young team. Yeah, it is a very young side. But she's flanked by... Um, two very experienced players. You know, we've got our stalwart, um, Tamara Silcox. She's the only Marco woman to have played in every single game um, in the jersey since we started in 2017. So she'll be getting her 30th cap uh, this season. She's an absolute thoroughbred in the team. You know, Mm. she's a ripe old age of 25, um, and she's absolutely just a go-getter, a real thoroughbred horse that leads by example, and like Hannah, is very encouraging. And then we've brought Sui Paraisa in from um, Canterbury. She was in our team last year and really epitomises that high performance um, on the field. And, you know, when you've got young side that aren't used to seeing that um, and the quality around mm. Tasman, they just inspire. They just aspire to be like her. So and she, you know, a mother of young, young females as well, young daughters. So she's just got that motherly instinct that really those younger players are just wanting. Yeah, last year she was an absolute outstanding player for your uh, for your team. Uh, a different level, as you say. She's played international rugby. She's played international league. She's played in Canterbury. She's now a Marco, uh, a, a, a wonderful player, Mel. Yes, yes, she is a um, wonderful person too. You know, all three of those women are just wonderful characters. 
you know, and just a damn good bugger, if you like. So mm. you can't get any better than that. Uh, an amazing fact that you are just one of two female head coaches in this year's FPC. So uh, what do you think that is, and, and what do you think needs to change to get uh, more female coaches in lead roles? Well, that's a, um, that, that's a really good question. Um, for me, uh, here in Tasman, I've, I've had a lot of support, you know, especially from our current CEO, Lyndon Bray, and our past CEO, uh, Tony Lewis. He was very integral in um, driving me in that space and um, literally holding me accountable from the start. You know, you want this, you want this in your career, well, then you go and get it and you show me what it looks like. So when, you, when you've got that and you've got that support from the union and your family, you know, you can only, can only go up. But it's one of those things in um, coaching, um, and I've just come off a um, two-year elite coaches scholarship called Te Hapaitanga, which we sort of dive into this. Um, really, the, the bottom line is women won't go for a role unless they're 90% certain of the job itself. And men, on the other hand, would probably, if they knew half the job, then they would put their hand up for the role. And, and that, is, that is a true fact, actually. So it's trying to break down those barriers and you know have that trust in yourself and your abilities to be able to put your hand up and go forward. Um, but for me, I've, I've had big mentorship around me and it hasn't been easy it absolutely hasn't been easy but um it's something that i i choose to try and get better at each year so um and i've got the backing of the union and the and players and my um you know management group to do so so i'm quite happy in this space to keep challenging myself as long as the players are happy having me so yeah well, I'm pleased that Tasman, again, is being a trendsetter in, in having one of two female head coaches in the Farah Palmer Cup, so that, that that's magnificent. Uh, but Mel, you've got, clearly, if you've been doing these courses and, and, and getting yourself into coaching, you must have aspirations for the future. Oh, absolutely, Liz. Um, I'm quite an ambitious woman. You know, I um, I really had to do a, a career shift myself. I've, I've only ever had two passions in life outside my family. One is rocks, and the other one's rugby. So rocks being rugby. geology, not rocks in uh, your head, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, depends how much sleep I've had. But yeah, no, I worked 15 years on oil rigs as a um, exploration geologist, and um, you know, having a family and um, working in that field that don't go together. So I really sort of pushed early on in my playing career. Um, for my other passion, which was uh, rugby. I knew my legs wouldn't last forever on the field, so I wanted to stay involved um, in any way possible, and, and coaching was something that came quite, quite natural to me as a player, being one of the um, leaders in the group. I was always sort of asked to run the set piece and you know run the attack plan and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it was, it was natural um, progression for me to jump into coaching. But um, I'm somebody that won't stop until I get to where I want to be. And for me, I would love to um, be a part of the Black Ferns coaching group one day. Uh, but first, I think I need to um, travel overseas and try my hand at some international experience before I can come back and put my hand up with absolute confidence and say, hey, look at me, I'm a strong contender and I really want to push for that role. Oh, good on you, Mel. That's... Uh that's awesome. Hey, talking of girl power, <laughs> your support yeah. group is is very good in that you've got a lot of female uh, females in support. You know, your manager, your physio, um, and and a role that Rebecca Kirsten is playing for you. So a good group of of young ladies behind you to mentor the players. Absolutely, I had you know one of the key markers this year, the key difference um, this year is we've got a um, a strong manager. And that's uh, Helen Leota. She um, actually, her and I have a history. We played the Auckland Storm together, FPC, back in the day. And she's also a uh, Manusina um, player as well. So she's very much, um, you know, she, she knows really well what our environment requires without me having to sort of guide her in that space. She understands it well. She understands the um, cultural differences we have in the team. You know, she's of Polynesian background. Um, we have a lot of young Polynesian players coming through. So, and she's a mum of, of young of young daughters as well. So she comes with um, huge strengths on and off the field, and obviously she's doing her job perfectly when the head coach doesn't stress out. So, and uh, we've got um, 
Tenille Wilson that's come into the fold this year. So she's uh, been physiotherapist for Stoke, Stoke Men's Prem Team. So she's going to try her hand um, in this space. And so far, she's just assimilated beautifully. Um, it's been sublime. Haven't had to show her her role or anything. And mm-hmm. another one that sort of knows the drill, knows the role, and understands the values we have in high performance. And then, of course, we've got uh, Rebecca Kirsten coming into the fold. And um, I created a role for her because Rebecca um, retired last year uh, due to injury, and she's only young. Um, and I really wanted to keep her involved because she has huge uh, cultural strength and connection. Um, I called them her superpowers um, as a human. And I really wanted her to be able to sort of still share that with the players, even though she was no longer a player. Um, hence, I've um, created a role as the cultural advisor and leadership um, for me. So she is my wingman in that space. And if I go to ground um, in the season, getting too involved in game plan and what's going on on the field, she'll be the one that will pat me on the shoulder and say, hey, hey, we need to be focusing on this. So I very much value her and respect her um, as a person. So very lucky to have those three in the team, yes. And then last but not least, a grizzly man, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Billy Guyton, who's a, a 52-game Marco halfback. He's going to assist you with the coaching. Uh, so, yeah, what's his role in the group? Uh, yes, uh, Billy, he's, um, he, we've been together for three years now in the coaching group, so he's been um, the assistant coach uh, for three years now, and he's going to be our attack coach. So he comes with a huge strength. For me, he's um, very um, his tactical knowledge is absolutely outstanding, and that comes with his years, obviously, as a player in the Marco, but also a Super Rugby player and a Māori All Black mm. as well. So uh, he's very inspirational to me um, in that space. You know, he has the strength um, that I might not necessarily have. So we've worked out over the three years together. We've we've ironed out each other's rough edges, and um, you know, it's not always a smooth. Um, a smooth time in the um, season, in the SPC season, and I, I would expect that. You know, I don't expect things to be harmonious all the time. Otherwise, um, to me, it's like the head coach gets getting her own way all the time. So he does push me in that space to um, try new things, especially in the attack play. We've got a um, incredibly interesting uh, game plan this year. It's very different. It's not played by anyone else, as I understand it. So. The girls have bought into it and it's exciting that we have um, Billy's capabilities on board to be able to have that confidence to, you know, really drive that space and and trust his own abilities to be able to um, drive that team to a new direction. And, of course, he gets my full support. We um, were actually great mates um, off the field as well. So, um, yeah, we make a good team. But he would say he was the the tactical guru and I would be the strategist. So together we we complement each other really well. Sounds like a good combination. Hey, Mel, thank you very much for joining us on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure to get insights leading into the FPC season. And uh, we, well, what can we say? We just, uh, it's very, very exciting. And we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. There you go. That's uh, Mel Bosman, who is the Marco FPC coach. And uh, man, it's very exciting about what's coming up and she sounds very, very switched on. Yeah, a, a terrific woman, uh, very, very intelligent. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as a as a as a on and off the field type person. Uh, but yeah, look, this this squad is very talented. Um, it's got the right infrastructure or the support personnel behind it. I'm expecting genuine improvement. Uh, we've we've had, never had an easy road in Farah Palmer Cup because we just don't have a lot of talent in our in our region. Uh, you know, a lot of people leave, they go off to uh, tertiary education or go and get jobs out of the region. So it's hard to keep players, but the talent she's got with the addition of a, just a couple of uh, other uh, uh, players from uh, Canterbury, this is a terrific side and I wish them just the very best for an improved FPC campaign in 2022. Mel Bosman, the Marco FPC coach. The Marco Rugby Roundup. It's the talk of Nelson. Talk Nelson Radio.